The social networking site Facebook has unveiled changes to its security settings aimed at improving privacy and curbing cyberbullying. Young users will be able to request two passwords to make it harder for others to sign into their account and have their session encrypted so their movements on the site can't be intercepted. Facebook's also changed the way users can report cyberbullying and added a feature where young people can notify a trusted adult if they're being bullied online. But some critics say the social networking site still has some way to go to protect users. Facebook's changes come a day before the US President Barack Obama becomes the first world leader to visit the media giant's headquarters. And to analyse how well Facebook's protecting its users, I'm joined from our Melbourne studio by Colin Jacobs from the internet watchdog Electronic Frontiers Australia. Colin Jacobs, do you think that the changes Facebook has announced uh, will be effective in, first of all, combating cyberbullying? Well, it's interesting what they're doing with cyberbullying. Uh, it's certainly true that allowing children to report uh, offensive behaviour or upsetting behaviour to adults is probably something that children are going to want to use. There's, we're getting some good research now that's been conducted in the not too distant past about just how kids feel about cyberbullying, who's being cyberbullied by whom and what they do about it. And although the problem is often exaggerated, only a small minority of kids do experience it, uh, we have found that the vast majority of kids do go and tell someone about it. Um, half of them tell a friend, a good proportion tell a parent or teacher or a sibling. So there's some evidence that being able to respond to content that's upsetting or, or is attacking the, the, the person by reporting it to a responsible adult is probably something that kids will use. So we see this as probably a, pos a positive development and one that's informed by the evidence. Facebook has often been accused of lagging behind on uh, privacy and security issues. Uh, do you think these changes go far enough? Is the real test how effective these changes actually are? Well, one of the tests is whether or not it's in Facebook's financial interest to uh, pursue privacy and security. When it comes to privacy, the ability of users to control their information is often at odds with Facebook's desire to have more information that they can use to sell advertisements to, to their advertisers. But when it comes to security, the more fraud they have to deal with, the more expensive that's going to be for Facebook. So they have a bit more of an incentive there to be proactive. And as Facebook has become more important, it's something that can be used for financial fraud and Facebook users have indeed been targeted to have their identities stolen. So some of these measures, measures that they've announced today, such as the, uh, the two-factor authentication where you need two passwords to get in, one of them which may be delivered, for instance, via your mobile phone, that's a good step, uh, offering that to people. And that, that's the sort of security we'd expect to see when we're using our internet banking. But still uh, the some other thing of, they've uh, done is... Yeah. Go on. The other thing they've done is, is encrypt or make it uh, um, available so that you can encrypt the conversation you're having with Facebook. So that is to encode everything that's going between you and Facebook. They haven't made this the default setting and uh, we think that's a bit of a security hole. It's still possible that somebody could intercept uh, what you're um, communicating with Facebook and that's still a problem. Well that's exactly what I was about to ask you, this sort of point that you have to opt in rather than having default settings on things. That's still a, a flaw and perhaps that's something that they need to change? It's a bit of a flaw with the way the whole World Wide Web works. Uh, unless you see that little padlock in your web browser that shows you the uh, conversation you're having with the web server is encrypted, then a third party could intercept what you're, what you're sending ac across the web. Now, the only reason why uh, not all websites work that way is that there's a small cost involved in terms of the amount of computing power you need to, to do the encoding and decoding. Uh, we, in this day and age, though, that shouldn't be a big limitation to a site like Facebook, so it's still a bit mystifying why that's not turned on by default, and that's something we would like to see in the future. Because there is so much personal information on our Facebook pages, as you've just made the point, Facebook wants some information out there, it helps their advertisers, but because we have so much personal information, should we still expect to see the same level of security that we would see, for example, on an internet banking site? I think the, the place that Facebook and other sites like that are taking people's lives means that uh, I think the time has arrived where that information is just as precious as your banking information. Uh, already those that are out there trying to scam people, not only are they fishing around for people's banking logins, but Facebook is just as important a target and it can have financial consequences, not just those involving um, ordinary privacy concerns. People have received messages from friends of theirs saying, help, I'm overseas, um, my wallet's been stolen, can you please send me some money? And they've done that thinking a very close friend is in distress, but it turns out the Facebook account has been hacked. So 
um, from a privacy point of view and even a financial point of view, uh, there isn't really a good reason anymore why Facebook should be treated any less sensitively than our banking details. How much of this falls upon our own personal responsibility though? I mean, should people limit, simply limit the amount of information that you put on your site, limit the amount of friends that you, that you allow to access your site, or is that just not simply the way things are done these days? Well, I mean, Facebook, I don't think you can argue that they don't have a responsibility to do whatever is reasonable and in, in their power to safeguard the information that people are entrusting with them. Uh, they should do the utmost and they shouldn't let cost considerations get in the way of having the best security that the money can buy. Um, but of course people do have to be responsible for the information they share. People ought to educate themselves a little bit about how the privacy settings work and um, people are going to have to get used to thinking before they post, you know, who could see this? Could this affect my friendships? Could this affect my ability to gain employment in the future? Uh, I think it, you know, it's not exactly early days anymore when it comes to this, but people still make mistakes and often you know, Facebook uh, have made the privacy settings a little bit complicated for the, for the average user to master. So we have to take personal responsibility, but um, it's incumbent on Facebook to make it as easy as possible and as user-friendly as possible to safeguard your private information. Colin Jacobs, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. You're welcome.